Common Council chooses new city administrator, county COVID update, state issues guidelines to reopen schools. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. The Sheboygan Common Council met last night to take action on replacing City Administrator Daryl Hofflin, who will retire on July 3rd. The item addressed was the resignation of Todd Wolf as Alder Person. Although noted in the agenda, the meeting did not go into closed session. Instead, the council proceeded to interview Wolf as the hiring committee's recommended can candidate for the city administrator role. After nearly an hour of Q&A, the council voted to approve Wolf and finalize his employment agreement. He is expected to begin on July 7th. The meeting will be rebroadcasted on WSCS today at 4 o'clock p.m. As the coronavirus pandemic enters its fourth month of local presence and progresses with few unexpected twists, the County Division of Health Services announced today that it will issue daily updates Monday through Friday only. Since first issued on March 12th, the reports had been released daily. A recent uptick in cases has flattened somewhat, and hospitalizations are, as of Monday, zero, as the two that were being treated have now been released. 186 total cases of COVID-19 have now been confirmed in Sheboygan County, with the addition of three since Sunday. Another 310 tests came back negative yielding a confirmation rate of less than 1%. 36 cases remain active, down five as eight persons have recovered in the last 24 hours. In Wisconsin since Sunday, 3.8% of test returns or 249 persons were positive while 600 uh, or 6,300 tests were negative. That pushed the state total cases over 200 25,000 at 25,068 positive returns. 745 persons have died of the coronavirus in Wisconsin, and one has succumbed to the disease since Sunday. The county DHS also promoted new guidance from the Centers of Di for Disease Control record concerning face coverings. Given that the coronavirus is still highly contagious, the CDC recommends that in addition to staying home as much as possible, practicing social distancing and frequently cleaning hands, that everyone wears cloth fa face coverings when leaving their homes, regardless of whether they have a fever or symptoms of COVID-19. This is because of evidence that people with COVID-19 can spread the disease even when they do not have any symptoms. The face coverings, therefore, are worn to protect others and not necessarily or exclusively the wearer. The exceptions that are that young children under the age of two or those with difficulty breathing or who cannot remove the mask on their own should not wear one. A new mental health awareness movement called the Happiness Project will be launched on Thursday at Sheboygan's Above and Beyond Children's Museum with the unveiling of a giant mural on the north wall of the museum. The project is led by Sheboygan North High valedictorian Maddie Green, who was inspired to collaborate with the local community of people, schools, and businesses to offer a continuing series of in-person and virtual programs all designed to promote wellness through activities including meditation, yoga, tai chi, health, and nourishment. Launching it all will be the unveiling of the whale mural that was designed and painted by local artist Jessica Rezel, and concluding with a confetti drop. This ceremony, rescheduled from Monday due to the inclement weather, will have limited in-person attendance due to the pandemic but it can be viewed online on Facebook and Instagram between 4 and 
The Ryder Cup matches scheduled to be held September 25th to 27th in Wisconsin will be postponed until next year due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Guardian of London reported Monday. According to the newspaper, the official announcement regarding the event at Whistling Straits in Kohler, Wisconsin is expected to come next week. The move also would have a permanent effect on the Ryder Cup reschedule per The Guardian, with the biennial matches moved to odd-numbered years moving forward. The 2022 event rescheduled for Marco Simone Golf and C Country Club in Rome would be moved to 2023. The next U.S. home series after Whistling Straits would be in 2025 at Beth Page Black in Farmington, New York. And the 2026 event set for Adair Manor in Ireland would instead be held in 2027, the year of the Ryder Cup's 100th anniversary. The GolfChannel.com reported that the PGA of America spokesman declined to comment on the Monday report. The Ryder Cup switched from being played to odd numbered years in, to being held in even numbered years when the 2001 edition was postponed to 2002 in the wake of 9-11. The reported 2020 postponement comes after much discussion about whether the Ryder Cup should have no fans in the course or with a limited gallery. Either option would severely diminish one of the event's top attributes, a partisan crowd cheering on the home team and attempting to rattle the visiting team. However, the coronavirus cases on the rise in much of the United States and with travel restrictions still in place, Ryder Cup organizers decided to wait a year, according to The Guardian. The seven-day average of new COVID-19 cases has risen over the past week in Wisconsin, according to the state's Department of Health Services. Team Europe won the most recent Ryder Cup, beating the Team USA 17 and a half to 10 and a half in September 2018 at Le Golf National near Paris. Earlier on Monday, the PGA of America confirmed that the PGA Championship would be held without fans this summer in San Francisco, San Francisco TPC Harding Park. The event, originally scheduled for May 14th to 17th, will be played August 6th to 9th as the lone major of 2019-2020 PGA Tour season. The PGA Tour was shut down in mid-March due to the pandemic, but it restarted with no fans present at the Charles Schwab Challenge June 11th to 14th in Fort Worth, Texas. Fans will be allowed to return to courses beginning with the Memorial Tournament on July 16th to 19th in Dublin, Ohio. The season-ending FedEx Cup playoffs are set to be contested from mid-August to early September, and the U.S. Open at Winged Foot Golf Club in Mamaroneck, New York, was postponed from mid-June to September 17th to 20th at the Masters, pushed back from early April to November 12th to 15th in Augusta. The Open Championship scheduled to be held July 16th to 19th at Royal St. George's in Sandwich, England, was canceled. The Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction has released a new guidance plan to reopen schools in the fall amidst of COVID-19 pandemic. The Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction published Education Forward, a guidance document for Wisconsin district and school leaders to use. The report dubbed Education Forward tells school administrators to expect COVID-19 to be prominent for the next 18 months. The nearly 90-page document was released on Monday morning and it offers several scenarios for school schedules, in-person or virtual learning, physical distancing, that includes the possible four-day school weeks with the fifth day reserved for deep cleansing, it also includes the possibility for, of two days at school and the remaining days of virtual learning. 
The GPI does not have the authority to order schools to close. That resets with the Department of Health Services and the Assembly's Education Committee hears testimony on reopening public schools later this week. And finally, when Vice President Mike Pence visits Wisconsin this week, he will be joined by Wisconsin's former governor. Pence is set to visit Milwaukee on Tuesday and will be joined by the Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVoy, for a school choice roundtable at Waukesha STEM Academy. Afterward, he will deliver remarks at the Faith in America event in Pewaukee, where he will be joined by Scott Walker. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump will also be coming to Wisconsin next week. He will tour Marionette Marine on Thursday, where he will talk about $200,000 in Navy contracts that could add 1,000 new jobs at the shipyard. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.